There are very few industries that traffic in copper, plumbers, electricians, etc. But we are seeing persons unrelated to those industries and professions disposing of copper to recyclers repeatedly, usually in short periods of time. A permit requiring requirement to sell copper seems to be an appropriate next step. Demand at the local level must be addressed. The, this must be done by ensuring that individuals who sell metal to local scrap recyclers are selling goods that they possess legally. We believe that there must be legislative action that would, for the most part, require a license to sell copper to recyclers on a continuous basis. There appears to be a lack of responsibility and accountability on the part of some. I think we all have to ask ourselves a critical question. What is reasonable and what are the expectations of a reasonable person? This community has seen an impact to growth, development, and the devastation of properties. The deterioration of neighborhoods because properties have been uh, transformed into a state of worthlessness. Consumers are experiencing higher building expense because contractors and builders must pass on increased costs due to those thefts Police budgets must be reassessed and funds redirected to deal with this issue. Ten officers have been involved in the investigation log and hundreds of hours because of this issue. On behalf of the citizens of this community and to the well-being of this community, we are appealing to the community, the media, citizens, local, state, and national leaders and legislators to get involved and let's work together to combat this problem. Now I would like to introduce to you Lieutenant Tim Suber, who's the commander of the uh, Neighborhood Improvement Team, who have been at the head of this investigation, and he will go through uh, that with you. Behind me is a board that has a listing of the houses, maps, uh, Transactions here where stolen copper was uh, sold at various recycling groups in the county. Um, and right here we have the suspects. There's 12 suspects on the board here. Again, the neighborhood improvement program, uh, better known as the MIP team, uh, this operation uh, started in uh, mid February and uh, concluded uh, about a week ago. And we'll talk about a few things here. Now, currently, it's between $3, $3.5, $4 per pound. These are some of the articles that uh, we retrieved from the internet. Copper theft is rapidly growing crime. Uh, Skyrocketing prices lead to copper crimes. And again, for these copies, go over the government. Again, here's a diagram, a chart. As you can see, a steady increase here. Right after 2005, it starts to increase. And it's remaining that way up until now. I'm going to begin with the most side residential. These are the two main suspects in, in that investigation, uh, Brenda McCoy and Jack Anderson Jr. The estimated property damage that she was responsible for here is 85, over $85,000 in property damage. Uh, more than a ton of copper or metal was stolen from these businesses, and her net profits were up around $5,000. She has a total of 69 warrants on her each time she is in custody. This is Jackie Anderson Jr. Again, his estimated property damage is over $184,000. He also estimated copper weight totals for more than a ton himself. And again, estimated illegal earnings is $5,000. He has 47 burglary second warrants for a either grand larceny, more than, more than $5,000 or less than $5,000, and a few petty larceny and a few malicious injury to real property. He wants to him. Other suspects include Jack Anderson Sr., Kenneth Mack, and Jeffrey Crow. 
before there's Leslie Lyle and Alan Cole. Now this is Collins Park, the Hope 6 site of Collins Avenue, as well as Emma Trail. Terry Hurst and Brian Stevens are the suspects in this. Terry Hurst and Fair. Paul Paris here, that's been property damage is $153,000. Estimated copper weight totals is over one and a half tons of, of metal that we stole from these businesses. Estimated legal earnings are roughly around thirty-seven hundred dollars. He has twenty-seven charges, fifteen malicious injury property, eleven larcenies, and one possession stolen goods. Speaking about Paris, and this, this is an interesting uh, point here. CRG is one of the recycling groups here in, in our county. Uh, you can only find when he went to that location twice on December 31st of 2007. However, he went to Mint Scrapyard 29 times on only 24 different dates from January 1st, 2008 to May 19th. So obviously uh, the stats show that he uh, favored Mint Scrapyard over some of the other recycling groups here in town. This is an accomplice here, Terry Fair. Don't have an estimated earnings for him, but he also has eight charges pending on him this time. He is also in custody. These are some of the businesses. We have Bob Burnett here on Little Church Street that was victimized, as well as Mako. They were victimized, roughly about $40,000 of damage uh, that was done to Mako.